cat is Maximus here. My cat is super camera shy, super hard to get her in the videos. We're talking about Matabo's super cheap D10 VH2. Same model as the Hitachi, but this is like the revised one now that they, uh, the merger between Matabo and Hitachi have basically become complete. Matabo's rebranding everything. It is just a sticker. All they did is the, it's the same Hitachi moldings and they just removed the embossed Hitachi off the mold and then they just put Matabo stickers on there. The HPT, as much as you like it to think it stands for high performance tools, stands for Hitachi power tools and it still says Koki Holdings on the back. This is made in China. On paper, this drill should be pretty good. I've seen it super cheap, like 32 bucks off a Walmart site. It uses ball needle bearings, seven amp motor. It appears to have a half inch spindle, which it bodes well for replacing the chuck. On paper, it should be pretty decent. 2700 RPM, so a little bit faster than what would be considered the standard for 3H general use drills, which is 2500 RPM. So for a 3H drill, why on earth does it have uh, threaded bungs? And this is something Hitachi's done for a long time. And it's really, the issue with these drills, or not the issue, is their general use. It's not just for making holes. You can use sanding discs, polishing discs, wire wheels, you know, use them to polish up headlights or all sorts of stuff. The issue is when people do that, they tend to hold them like this. And with these big 7 amp motors, I mean, you can see what they're claiming here. 800 watts of maximum output. Believe me, holding it like that and blocking the vents, this thing is going to overheat. And there's definitely been some complaints online about these having issues with overheating. And of course, tons of complaints about the chuck. It appears that they attempted to put a better chuck on this than what Hitachi had in years past on their little 3H drill. But people are still having issues with it. And I've mentioned that in other videos. Keyless chucks. They have to be really nice ones to really be worth a darn. Like on this Porter Cable 2610, 2500 RPM 7-amp drill. It was a 3 h truck, but since I had a half-inch spindle, I put on a Jacobs, and we can see that wherever it went, a Jacobs 500 series hand chuck. This works a lot better, and that's probably what you'll end up having to do with this Hitachi if you end up with it. And which is kind of sad because even if you get it cheap for 35 bucks, now you're stuck spending however much it co will cost you to get a Jacobs 500 series chuck. I, you know, those things can be 35 bucks by themselves. So all of a sudden you're spending 70 bucks and you could just get a better quality drill to start off with. And so that's kind of the, the issue, but uh, it could be a, a good value. It really could with the ball needle bearings besides the handles. So you screw in a handle so that you'd have the ability to so that the vents all nice and clear so when you're doing long-term operations like polishing sanding that type of stuff with the drill motor that you're not that it's able to keep itself cool enough another big complaint i've read about online is that since they've been having some man, man essentially assembly or manufacturing issues issues with the wiring and the connection between the power cord and the trigger switch and so people have issues with you know, using at different angles and them working and not working. It does have a, an adjustable dial on the trigger, which I do like, but it also promotes overheating because the fans move in less air. You know what? I probably should get a, a second opinion. Echo, are Metabo tools any good? Here's something I found on the web. According to BethyPro.com, Metabo is a very nice brand of quality tools. So, Matabo grinders, and that's what are, are good. That's the thing they're really known for. But when they merged with Hitachi, uh, they haven't redesigned any of the old Hitachi tools. They just relabeled them. And so that could be the issue. Anyway, as far as the dial, if you're using it something like this, which is convenient because you... Although that doesn't work quite as well. You can lock it and then adjust the speed like that. And that is handy, especially if you're using it for polishing, you know, maybe polishing your car or something. But you're promoted to bog it down and once again, without the proper airflow, they just get hot.
and you can put the side handle on either side. Anyway, we'll do a drilling test. This truck obviously is not very good. And then I'll do a quick disassembly. We'll take a look at the wiring in the handle and I'll bust open the gearbox. It does have a plastic diaphragm. This seems like it's in a little cast aluminum uh, front case, but we'll take a look inside in a minute here. Per usual, I'll be using my three quarter inch installers bit with a 3 8 shank because it's notorious for slipping. We'll just put this in here. Give it a good wobble and make sure it's not a little bit cantered. That can be an issue. I'm going to tighten this up. Absolutely everything I have. I've shown like on that Jacobs 500 series, it will hold this bit. Let's see if this will hold the bit. Come on. Got a little bit loose there. I'll try it one more time here. And that is something to mention. It's the precision. I mean, chucks are ground, so they, they run on center. But when you tighten them down, they'll just be like a, a burr. Who knows? The bit won't be perfectly straight. And then you start drilling. And then it will shift, and then the chuck will loosen up. Really, you drill a little bit, and surprisingly enough, it worked in this situation. You re-tighten it down again, and it will actually hold the bits. It actually did okay. So anyway... Surprisingly enough, the chuck did hold after reseeding it. It's just kind of dealing with the nuances. I've had plenty of other keyless chucks. It didn't matter. You could reseed it and reseed it and use pliers to tighten it down. And actually, I'm surprised this one did work. So, I can only speak to my experience. A lot of people have a lot of problems with keyless chucks, including on this drill. Plenty of power. I was really surprised. That was 2,700 RPM. It really tore those holes out. And the gears, they sound okay too. No chunkiness in there. Let's take a look inside. They are using cheaper pla uh, fasteners. They're just Phillips only. Oh, I should also mention, not only they're not Torx, but they're standard plastic screws. They are not plastic tights. Plastic tight screws, as you can see, have a second set of threads that are just extra long to get extra heavy duty grip. But these are just standard ones. What it means is if you have one of these drills, you know, and you use it relatively often, you'll periodically want to recheck that the gearbox screws are staying tight. All right, let's take a look at the electrical. Only three screws holding on the handle. That doesn't bode well if it gets dropped or something. There's our obligatory inventory control tag that they put inside power tools. And that still didn't stop people from stealing them. So now they're all behind lock cages. What's the material? PA6 GF30. That's glass fiber, 30% fiberglass reinforced nylon. So that actually bodes well. And there's our motor. It does have brass brush guys, but they're inside plastic uh, housings. I suppose that's okay, but not the greatest. There's no bellows or anything. You can see that, but I suppose that's okay. We do have a bump here. I suppose that is probably the variable speed circuit that they put on the outside. Maybe get a little better cooling. Wiring seems to be okay in this unit. It isn't a proprietary power cord. Pretty easy to replace. All you have is two wires, and they just have their... Uh, they're just in spring-loaded... Uh, holes, which admittedly can be a hassle because you have to get a pick and shove it in the next to the wire in order to get the wire to release, but it isn't too bad. As far as that, not a whole lot else to say. Pretty easy to replace the brushes in this unit. And something else that uh, I find interesting is the wires. They're just bare wires and then they're wrapped and soldered to the terminals on these brush guides. You can see that there. Ultimately, that should be more reliable just because there isn't any spring clips or anything that can get loose. 
As far as the motor concerned, we can see that it has narrow bands on the commutator. That means it is a higher speed motor. Some kind of little defect there. That could have been a piece of carbon that broke off and got caught in between those two bars and etched a little hole in there. That's kind of interesting. Pretty rare to see something like that. The motor doesn't seem to be skipping, so normal folded contacts dipped in varnish. Nothing really too special to talk about there. It seems okay. It seems normal in there. Interesting observation. The way this top belt clip plugs in, it's actually a vent right there for additional airflow. But when they put in this belt clip, it just is designed to fit into one of these convolutions here. But when you have that in there, it blocks the top vent. That's a little bit of an oversight. They should have had some notches there. But if you have one of these that's overheating and you don't use the belt clip, you can just pop that thing out and all of a sudden you'll have a whole bunch more airflow. Another thing about blocking that airflow is it does, it's blocking a lot of air from getting over the upper brush causing that. That may cause it to overheat because the way these vents are, you can see the center bar in there. These vents are kind of offset below the center line of the motor, which means that this lower brush is getting already getting more air than the upper brush on the side vent, so it really kind of needs that upper vent. I think I'm going to leave the belt clip off of this. All right, to finish this up, we'll take a quick look at the gearbox. Don't, they should have put a metal diaphragm on there. Let's see if I can't get this thing apart. I really had to kind of pry and finesse a little bit here. So the front case is indeed plastic. I'm trying to figure out what it is. The printing's really light. Maybe you can just see it right there, PC GF15. So the front case is actually polycarbonate, 15% fiberglass. The rest of the tool is nylon, 30% fiberglass. So it is indeed all plastic, but that's kind of why it has this metallic look, because it is a much harder plastic. Nonetheless, the build quality builds well. Ball bearings on both ends of the motor. And it even uses a rubber sealed, surprisingly enough, ball bearing on the back of the spindle and a larger ball bearing on the front. So the spindle is actually held pretty tight and it can take a lot of lateral loads if you're using like grinding wheels. Pretty small little spindle right there. As a matter of fact, if we really look, it's just a little four tooth spindle. So who knows how long that would last under heavy duty applications, but at least it's helical. And they're taking something out of uh, DeWalt, Black & Decker's pay playbook. DeWalt and & Black and & Decker have been doing this for a very long time on their drills. You can see it's kind of odd, but they've machined down the tip of the gear. It's actually to help support it to keep it from deflecting. And if we just get in there, you can see that there's a tiny little... I don't think that's a rolling bearing. That would be like a, a sleeve bearing right there. And what that's doing is providing additional support... For the tip of the spindle so under heavy duty loads it isn't deflecting causing uneven wear so that actually is a nice touch i mean as far as how this tool is built i mean for the fact that i've seen it for 32 dollars from cpu outlets it's not a bad tool so to really finish it off really it's a uh, they're selling us for so cheap, and so I suspect that there's uh, much wider tolerances on the quality control. And that's why there's so many negative reviews about this tool, is that you don't really know if you're going to end up with one like this, which is just fine. The gears are fine. This chuck actually worked okay for me through that demonstration. That bit is notorious for slipping. Uh, and the build quality, being all ball bearing. Surprisingly enough, even two ball bearings, them being rubber sealed and in even internally, which is surprising, makes it for a nice tight spindle. And when you're doing a lot of sideways work, there's the oversight where the belt clip blocks the upper vents. So you should remove that and that'll help keep it a little bit cooler. And some reasonable features like the ability to put it on a, on a side handle so you're not blocking the vent just by holding it under long term 
you know, sanding and polishing operations, the fact that it has a trigger lock and the lock works with the adjustable trigger, the fact that it has an adjustable trigger, you know, as far as what I can base my opinion on this particular Metavo unit, it's a pr pretty decent deal. It really seems like a decent drill with plenty of power. But your mileage may vary. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.